I asked Brother Richard, did he have a special today? And uh, he said, no. I said, well, I want to try one. My, I used to sing it years ago, and it's, it's a good song, and it talks about heaven. And it's talking about that um, when somebody goes to heaven, they can't wait to see you. And it actually is talking about that things are like you've never thought possible. It said it never rains and no one complains and we haven't seen a tear. We're having a great time. Wish you were here. But you know what? There is a place called heaven that we're going to be. The Kingsman actually recorded this song several years ago. And I think it's pretty neat. My son now is singing this song with the Kingsman. And, uh, and uh, I think it's neat that uh, he's actually able to do that. They came out with a national, the NQC Live project has just, just dropped that they did. They did the top best 12 songs out of the whole National Quartet Convention uh, in Pigeon Forge. And uh, one of the songs that they're singing, Chris is singing the lead on one of the top 12 songs. And I noticed this. They said, uh, you know, they're announcing them and all that. And the, and the tenor said, uh, at the end of the song, he said, Chris Bryant. And he's the only one mentioned by name out of the whole 12 songs. And I just said, you know, I'm, as a daddy, I'm like, <laughs> you know. But uh, anyway, uh, just, just proud of him. Uh, uh, getting to, to do his lifelong dream to share the, the word and song across this country and uh, just continue to remember them uh, in your prayers. But this song talks about heaven. Watching the tides roll in Friends that have gone on Oh, how I miss you so And somehow I know if you could Then you'd let me
tears and just understand in heaven <laughs> heaven's forever heaven's forever heaven's forever heaven's forever are you glad amen I mean in heaven today it's the same as it was yesterday it'll be the same tomorrow heaven is forever I tell you what, as, as our days, you know what, they, we all have those dates. I'm looking for the Lord again. That'd be just fine if He'd come on, amen? But uh, if He doesn't come, you know what, we all going to pass through death's door if He don't come in our lifetime. Uh, he's coming, there ain't no doubt about it. Well, there's no doubt that He's coming. He is coming. But uh, thanks be to God that I'm ready, I'm ready. But heaven is forever and forever and forever and forever. Uh, I'm just so glad. But in, anybody in heaven, I, I can't imagine. Can, can you imagine you get to heaven getting to meet all your loved ones? Can you imagine what it's going to be? I mean, we get to see Jesus. We get to hear about our heroes of our faith. We get to meet folks that has, been, that has gone on before us, that, that loved us and, and taught us about Jesus and and we get to see them together around the throne of God. You get to see those loved ones. You get to see those, those babies that passed away that you never... The Bible said, before I knew you in the womb, I formed, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you and ordained you a prophet. Do you know what? God said He knows the, our members of our body. He knows them. He knows them already before they're formed in the womb. Can you imagine... A mom coming up and saying, I always wondered what you looked like, darling. I always wondered what you was going to be like. Have a little old boy come up and say, hey, mama, hey, daddy. And you're like, oh, my goodness. My goodness, what heaven's going to be like. Heaven is a wonderful place where people go. Amen? If you wasn't here on uh, uh, Sunday night or Wednesday night, we've had some good studies. We really have. And uh, Sunday night, we actually uh, went over about First Timothy, about some qualifications and different things. And I thought, you know, God knew when we set up the qualification, we knew when we was getting ordained deacons and, and all that, that it was going to fall. I didn't plan it that we was going over First Timothy on the, the qualifications at the very week that we was setting an ordination meeting. I thought that was, I really thought that was of God. Out of, out of 66 books in the Bible... Out of all the chapters and verses, out of the many thousands of places, of all the places, we was right there going over the place where it talks about what we need to be in serving God. I think every deacon left saying, I'm not qualified. Amen? Wednesday night. I think every preacher, every minister left saying, there's no way I can be a minister. There's no way I could ever be a bishop. There's no way I could ever... I think every one of us left with our head down saying that there's no way. But aren't you glad for God's grace? Amen? I am tickled to death for God's grace. Well, um, this is the, the service that actually is the time of uh, the year that we look at... Uh, Valentine's Day. Everybody thinks about Valentine's Day and, and what it is, what it's not. Last night he talked about the two greatest commandments and he said to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul and all thy mind and he said love thy neighbor as thyself. But I want to give you something uh, this morning about um, from the Word of God and it kind of goes along 
with that, but it's in Exodus chapter number 20, Exodus chapter 20, and we'll read in verse number 6, Exodus 20 and verse 6. You know, we, we think that love, you see the, the Hallmark Channel and you got an idea of what you think love is. Around Christmas time, you got all those times about love. The world thinks they know what love is. You, you see the, the $50,000 that people spend on a wedding uh, on TV and you think they know what love is, but it's amazing you, the movie stars get married and they talk about all the things and who's doing the dress and who's doing the catering and who's doing this and who's coming there and who's showing this and who's showing that and a year later they're already divorced. But then they have another one just like it. You know, the cost of the wedding don't mean whether or not it'll actually last or not. Amen? How you're done is your commitment to God that matters and your commitment to one another but in Exodus 20, in verse 6, Exodus chapter 20, in verse number 6. You know of Exodus chapter 20 as the Ten Commandments, <laughs> verse, verses. He talks about he's a jealous God, and then he said, but in verse 6 he says this, And showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. I want to talk about this morning for a little bit, not just God loving us, but do we love Him? Do we love Him? He said He shows mercy to them that love me. I want to ask you this morning, do you love Him? Do you love Him? And amen. You can be seated. What is love? Love is not ignoring what's wrong. Amen? If you love somebody, you don't ignore what's wrong. If a parent loves their kid and their kid's coughing and they go, well, Mama, if you love me, you wouldn't make me take that medicine. Daddy, if you love me, you wouldn't let that doctor give me that shot. Ain't nothing like holding your kid while they're trying to set a bone or they're trying to, to sew them up trying to hold them down and, and they look at you and go, ah, like why are you letting them do this to me? You don't ignore the wrong because you love them. You don't ignore the wrong because you love them. When they do, when they do wrong and you, you show up at school and they go, why, don't you, why do you care whether or not I fail or not? You go, I want you to I want you to amount to some, I want you to be able to have decisions in life. I, we try to teach our children, and we try to tell them that, that we want to allow you to teach you and show you what you need to do, not to take away your freedom. We just want you to be in a position in life that you hadn't already messed up your life when you get to the point that you want to make decisions, that it's your decision, not things that's already done in your life that's made them for you. You know, there's a lot of folks sitting right here that situations they was in made decisions for them. Amen? You have to react to the situation and then down the road, that's what made your decision. My dad ended up working in years as a house painter after going to college, being a draftsman, being a radio controlman in the Navy, come out and was ready to go in a different direction of his life. But my grandpa fell off of a roof, fell off a two-story roof, fell on an azalea bush uh, off the top of a two-story bush and broke his back. And daddy had to take care of his uh, crews as far as take care of the painting job. And 50 years later, daddy retired from painting. <laughs> a decision was made for him because of situations. Now he went on to say that, that he would have ended up probably doing it anyway, but he said he ended up loving to work it somewhere new every few days. And he loved being outside most of the time because he said, uh, I don't believe I could stay cooped up all day long every day. 
And he said, so he ended up doing it. But love does not ignore what's wrong. It never ignores our wrong. Love is more than an emotional feel. People fall in love, they say. I think a lot of times they just fall in lust. Amen? Instead of fall in love. A lot of you have been married for many years and you'll look at your spouse and go, I remember when I first loved you. And, but a lot of times, years later after you've been with them, you look at them and you go, you know what? I love you. And you go, what, what do you mean? You mean I, you loved me all along. I thought I loved you. I didn't really know what love is. Now... I love you. Love is, is something that grows over time. It's, it's something that's there. And, and God talks about our relationship with Him. He said He shows mercy to them that love Him. That He loved Him. How important is our love? How important is it? Well, the Bible said it's God's greatest commandment, Matthew 22. It's our highest commandment to love God with all our heart and all our soul and all our mind. It's His highest commandment. It's the greatest commandment is to love God. You know why we do what we do? Because we love God. You know why we don't do what we do? Because we don't love God like we should. <laughs> it's our highest commandment. Love shows mercy. Love shows mercy. The Bible said He will love them that love Him and He will show mercy unto thousands. But love looks at people and says, I'll forgive you. I'll let you in. Mercy is, doesn't mean that I'm going to forget the wrong. Mercy means that I'm going to not hold it on your account. I'm going to let you go. You know when that police officer pulls you over, he goes, do you know how fast you was going? And he goes, you go, no, I had no idea. He said, hand me your license. You get it, writes it down, hands you that ticket, and along the way you go. But you add, he pulls over and he goes, you know how fast you was going? I said, not till I saw your blue lights, and that's the first thing I did is when I looked down. <laughs> and I noticed how fast I was going. Where was you going? And you tell him the honest truth, where you was going, what you was doing. And you look at him and say, you know what? I was going too fast and I shouldn't have. And I know I don't deserve for you to let me go. But if you will let me go, I will slow down. <laughs> you know what? It's like it can happen. He'll say, I tell you what, this time, this time, I'll let you go. But if I catch you coming back through here again like this, I'm writing you up next time. And you leave going, Whoosh. That's called mercy, amen? That's called mercy. Called mercy when he pulls you over and gives you the speeding ticket and says, I won't say nothing about that. You didn't have that seat belt on. And I won't say nothing about that that expired tag on the back, I'm just going to give you that speeding ticket. Now, I might be ringing your bell right now. I don't know nothing, by the way. Amen? <laughs> but it shows mercy. The father and the prodigal son, he did not, he, he did not even know the son, what was going on. The Bible says when he saw him a great way off, he ran to him. You know why? He wanted to show mercy. Not because, not because of what the son was doing. He missed him. He wanted him to do right. And love shows mercy. How many of y'all need God's mercy? <laughs> you just got to love Him more. <laughs> you just got to love Him more. Love brings mercy. It brings mercy. Love is a giver, not a taker. The Bible talks about in Deuteronomy 7, it says, Know therefore that the Lord thy God, He is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy 
with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. We know the scripture says, For God so loved the world, he... What? I said this before, but I love it. It said the teacher in an adult education class said, Write the words, I love you, in 25 words or less. And she gave us 15 minutes. And one lady was frantically writing and says at the last five minutes she wrote down this. And she read, This is what her results. How to say I love you in 15 minutes. He says, in 25 words or less, this without saying the words, I love you. He said, why? I have seen lots worse hairdos than that, honey. <laughs> These cookies are hardly burned at all. Cuddle up. I'll keep your feet warm. Love is not something we say. Love is something we do. We think about this time of the year and we think about this time, this, this holiday season this week about love. But I want you to know that we need, we need to show love. Not tell somebody we love them, we need to show somebody we love them. How can you show somebody you love them? You say, well, I can give them stuff. You know what? Most folks got more stuff than they need anyway. But when we talk about love, it don't, it don't need to be sometimes stuff. Love, I found out the greatest times that I understand about time that my parents or my grandparents loved me was the time that they spent with me. Time is something that, that's the greatest thing that you'll ever, you'll ever get. I can guarantee you that, that, that brother, uh, brother Earl spent time with these boys, these grand boys back here, and they look back, and that's something it would beat any gun or any fishing rod or anything else that he could have left them was the time that he spent with them. Time is something that you can give that's a gift that can never be replaced. Money can replace things, but money can never replace time. Time is something, when you invest it, you are giving of yourself. We try to teach our our little ones, that you need to spend time with your loved ones because that's something that one day you'll miss them. Amen? One day you'll wish you could get that time back. But you know what? Time just clicks right on. But I want to tell you this morning, I asked you a question at the beginning of the message today. I asked you the question was, he said, I will show mercy to them that love me. You know what I find out that God wants more than anything to do of, of yours? He, you say, God wants me to give my money. God wants me to teach that class. God wants me to this. God wants me to that. You know what I find out God wants more than all those things? God wants your time. He wants some time that's His time. Brother Dave Robinson told me here the other day, and I, I told the church, he said that he still has altar uh, time with his children and grandchildren. They still come over in the morning a lot of times and have a, a morning altar time. Brother Dave was given two weeks to live 11 years ago. They told him he had two weeks to live 11 years ago. He said, when you don't have but two weeks to live, the doctors tell you you're dying. That's one thing that you realize is precious is time. And they started coming over. <laughs> And they just kept coming over. And here they are 11 years later still coming over to do family altar time. He has to preach from a sitting position in a chair because he don't need to get that excited. And I've heard him preach. It's hard for him not to get excited. But he said, don't think we're all spiritual. We're not. We just broke. We ain't got no, my kids ain't got nowhere to go because it's cheaper to come to the house than it is anywhere else. Amen. But he said they want to spend time. And I've noticed their devotions. And I, I've noticed over the time that they'll put pictures of times with them and their daddy and grandpa and, and stuff. And I'm like, my goodness, they really cherish their time. Hopewell Baptist Church, God has you in mind. There is a place on the lap of God that you can feel that nobody else can feel. You know, after a mother has had a loss of a child, 
The other children may run and jump in her arms. The husband may come and put his arms around her. But you'll see her sometimes in that rocking chair out there. And there's a spot that's in that lap that nobody will ever feel because God took that child on the glory. What I want you to see today is God is up there in heaven on the throne of God. And there's a spot. There's a spot up there in His lap. He wants you to come spend a little time with Him. Reese, nobody can take your place in God's throne in His time with God but you. Nobody. No matter if you got 12 brothers and sisters. Nobody who you got. There's something up there. God says, just come spend a little time with me. I want to ask you this morning. Do you love Him? Do you love Him? We sing the song, Oh, how I, Jesus, Oh, how I love Jesus, Oh, how I love Jesus. Why? Because... Let's sing that again. Let's stand. Oh, how I love Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because He first loved me. Do it one more time. Oh, Do you, church? Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Because He first loved me. It's bowed and eyes closed. Father, I pray that today, God, Lord, I had a whole other message planned this morning. You changed my message, God. One song before I got up to preach. Somebody here needed to hear this today. That there's a spot in your lap that's waiting on them. No one can fill it but you with them. They need to feel the arms of God they need to feel you reaching around them this morning. God, it's going to take some effort on their part to spend some time with you. And Lord, we'll thank you and praise you for what you do. In Jesus' name.